so many powerful applications of artificial intelligence and natural language processing. And collectively, we're only just beginning to come to terms with the wider implications of these for society at large. This has come to the fore recently with the release of ChatGPT, an NLP chatbot which uses a variant of GPT, which is a language model which generates human-like responses trained from a large data set of text from the internet. So it can generate and debug computer code. It can automate manual and repetitive tasks like writing emails, summarizing and aggregating information with often very impressive accuracy and coherence. There are, of course, lots of ethical implications of these models, which will take many years to resolve, not least around the authorship and copyright of creative work. For example, this children's book was written with ChatGPT and illustrated with AI image generators such as Midjourney and DALI. But it also has an immediate and urgent implication for assessment in higher education. And that is most of the assessments set in higher education that I'm aware of can be answered pretty well by chat GPT. So with a few good keywords and queries to the bot, it can generate an essay response which is absolutely passable. And in some cases, is really quite good. So let's take a look. So this is Chats GPT, which I encourage you to have a play with. Now, a few years ago, we set a question on a level four module. So th these were second year undergraduate psychology students. And the title of the essay was Biological Interventions Have Had a Significant Impact on the Treatment of Mental Health critically discuss. So I can just write in here, write me an essay entitled, and I'll just copy this across. So here we have an essay, which is pretty well written on a lot of levels. So it's introducing the topic pretty well. Um, kind of signposts the content, steps through the different key ideas in a coherent way and concludes at the end. It probably wouldn't pass at this point because there's no uh, academic references, but I could just say rewrite this essay to include at least five references in APA format. So here we have something now that is pretty much passable. It's it's approaching something that might pass. Often in my experiments with this, it's over-reliant on a few references, and it's not like an incredible piece of work in that it's quite broad and descriptive. It's broadly accurate. ChatGPT isn't always accurate, but this this is broadly accurate. The strongest essays we got were the ones that are really making a new and novel argument. And this essay isn't doing that particularly. It's broadly descriptive, but is is pretty good and is around the level or better than the level that a lot of our level four students got to. Reasonably well grounded in the literature, signposting and well structured. And this is what we get with just two search queries. So you can imagine if we if we get a bit more specific about what we want it to include, it's going to get a lot better. We can also ask it to generate a reference list for this essay. So yeah, now we're approaching something that's pretty, pretty decent academic work. And it's just taken three queries. It's also pretty good at literature review. So I'm going to ask it to write me a literature review about explainable AI and the implications to psychology. 
Okay, so a pretty short literature review. Um, it would need to be a bit more developed than this, but again, we could ask it to rewrite it a bit longer, at least 10 paragraphs, ask it to include references like we did in the last example, and we could get something that is quite good. These aren't amazing pieces of work, in that they don't justify and build towards uh, the study, in the, which I, I would have asked my students to do. Um, but they're a really good starting point, and the kind of middling, um, slightly worse than an average, it, it's, it's absolutely hitting the kind of standard, and in some cases excelling the writing standard that uh, was produced by students. We could also ask it to write a methods section, so write a methods section that justifies the use of three focus groups with undergraduate students in a study about explainable AI. So this is quite nicely justifying the use of a specific method and kind of applying reasoning as to why a specific method for a specific study, which was one of the more complex skills that we were asking of students. Again, no references here, but we could ask the bot to rewrite it with references. Also worth saying, if you start a new chat and run through the same queries, it will generate something different each time. Some of the arguments will be pretty similar, and maybe we could train people to spot what those arguments are. Also, if there are a lot of essays being written by the same bot. I think we might start to see some similarities. But with a lot of the arguments being similar, we do also tend to find that with student work as well. So I'm not sure if it's a, a guarantee. What ChatGPT is really good at is synthesis of information. So this is an executive summary of Macbeth. Now I've asked ChatGPT to do this a number of times now and it does generate something that looks quite different each time. Um, and to me, as a non-English literature scholar, this looks pretty sound. Having not studied Macbeth for many years now, this is certainly better than anything that I could do off the top of my head. What ChatGPT really excels at is short answer questions, which are to the point and concise. So this is a question we set as part of a portfolio to students uh, a couple of years back. How is a critical approach to gender different to a sex differences approach to gender? Again, this is a very accurate uh, answer. How is a critical approach to gender different to a sex differences approach to gender include references? So it hasn't actually included in text references here, but it has generated some. So it wouldn't take much to uh, put those in text or you could run another query to get the bot to do it. And you can see that I've done two queries here in different chats. And although kind of broadly drawing on similar ideas, they are framed differently. Um, and I'm not sure if without a, a real fine tooth comb, I could detect that they were using the same tools to generate this response. What ChatGPT is also really remarkable at is generating recommendations. So I could ask it to generate some recommendations for older people, older adults staying safe online. So part of kind of more authentic assessments uh, can be generating uh, recommendations for specific people and then justifying those recommendations, which, which ChatGPT can do pretty well. It's also pretty good with case studies. So here's one about a primary school who are looking to develop representations of new and non-traditional families in the classroom. 
again, would need uh, some academic references here to make it uh, a passable piece of work. But what it's doing really well is structuring writing, which many students struggle with, you know, actually give the recommendation and give the response and potential barriers. And this this is really good in, in report writing and ChatGPT is, is achieving that very well. It is also pretty good at just pure reflection as well. So if I ask it to write a reflection of a nurse about a challenging day on the ward, and this looks pretty convincing and sound to me as a non-nurse practitioner. And again, we can ask it to incorporate academic references in the above reflection. And actually doing things this way round, you get some often some quite impressive results. So uh, because it started with a reflective piece of writing and then it's incorporating academic references, it's it's relating the two together like quite nicely in places. At times it is a little bit formulaic and maybe there could have been some more specific examples used. I could get ChatGPT to actually mark this uh, piece of work. So uh, write two paragraphs of feedback. When I showed this to my friend who doesn't work in higher education, he said, oh, great, AI can do the coursework, AI can mark the coursework, and then you can use the time you've saved to do some teaching and learning. And to be fair, He's got a good point. I'd say we overassess with essay writing in HE and to equate a good essay to good learning is perhaps problematic. The fact is these tools are now here and going forward in all areas of life, I think we're going to be less certain whether a straightforward piece of writing has been written by a human or a bot, or I think in a lot of cases it will be a hybrid between the two. People are starting to try and mitigate against these tools, for example, producing watermarks for AI-generated text, and a lot of effort will be spent trying to identify AI-generated writing or locking it down, going back to in-person exams or proctoring software. But I think this is just a sticking plaster and that we're playing a dangerous, futile and very resource heavy game if we're going to start banning tools like this, accusing people of using them. To my mind, what is much more meaningful, interesting and exciting is how we can think about encompassing these tools into a more authentic model of thinking about assessment at higher education. A new emphasis could be on more authentic writing styles. It's been described by Benedict Evans in a Guardian article as a confident bullshitter that can write very convincing nonsense, which does have a slight ring of truth about it. And certainly I think the more generic, descriptive, kind of glib arguments which don't really require any original thought and could be easily generated by a tool like ChatGPT are going to be more difficult to reward going forward. There are some excellent blog posts and articles about reimagining and updating our syllabuses in a way that acknowledges these tools. For example, getting students to optimise search prompts writing critiques of the responses created by tools like ChatGPT and getting students to submit evidence in different forms of media. So it can't be as simple as just typing the essay title in, hit and go and getting a nearly passable uh, uh, piece of work. I actually got quite excited about podcasts because I thought, oh, students could actually recall conversations between each other about a topic as a means of assessing their understanding a little bit like a viva. But lo and behold, I asked ChatGPT to write me a script between two students discussing a topic and it generated a script for me. But this 
is in general a bit less convincing, very formulaic script and I think would be easier to spot and it would probably be less effort for students to just have a conversation about a topic rather than staging a very convincing podcast script. I also think this is an opportunity to think about programmatic assessment. So these broader assessment models where we think more cohesively about students learning across a whole program, submitting a whole range of evidence in different formats. Again, it would be more difficult just to get uh, ChatGPT or another tool to do the legwork on a, a bigger assignment like that. So let's keep talking about this, looking at it seriously, using it yourself if you haven't already, so you're aware of how it works, what it can do, and let's start reimagining what higher education looks like alongside NLP and AI.